Rub up your engines! Isaac Ray says, Scotty, what are your thoughts on the new Toyota Supra with a manual tranny? Do you think it's going to be reliable? Well, in the long run, no, because it's not a Toyota. It's a BMW. BMW makes them for Toyota. Now, BMW makes pretty good engines and transmissions, but their technology is way up there. Their parts prices are way up there. The guys that work on them charge money way up there, and it is not a Toyota. It has nothing to do with Toyota, really. It's built in Germany or Austria, wherever they build them. They're just... BMW Roadsters, they have nothing to do with Toyota, and I wouldn't expect the reliability to be that great because BMW, as they age, become endless money pits, and that is a BMW. It is not a Toyota. Adam Triplett says, Scotty, are Mustangs or Camaros usually faster? Which are more reliable? Well, in the long run, generally, the Mustangs are more reliable. When you're talking faster, it just depends on what you're paying for. You can get a Mustang with a real souped-up engine. You can get a Camaro with a real souped-up engine. You can get both of them put out five, six, seven hundred horsepower if you really start throwing turbochargers and modifying the engines. You can make any car go fast if you want to put a lot of money into it, and you can buy either a Mustang or a Camaro with various levels. But just to show you, I don't think Ford's ever going to stop making the Mustangs, Camaros. They stopped making them for a while. They make them again. Now they're saying in a few years they're not going to make them anymore, or they're going to make them as electric cars. So in the long run, you're better off with a Mustang. Ooh, Scott says, I got a 2013 Toyota Sienna. The engine valve train is ticking. Do you know what it could be? Often it could be your variable valve timing is making a noise and ticking away. They don't have hydraulic lifters. They got adjustable valves with stainless steel shims. Generally on those, it's the variable valve timing, and sometimes you can do this, and it will stop. A lot of times, it's the timing chain rattling around, making noise, right? You could put a good cleaner in, like the ATS oil cleaner. You put it in, you rev the engine up at 15, 20 minutes at 2,000 RPM or so. Then you change the oil filter. A lot of times, that will clean it so much that the little galleyways that get plugged that make the VVT system make noise, fixes it, and the noise goes. If it doesn't, to fix it is big money. A lot of times, you got to replace the variable valve timing. It costs thousands of dollars to do. A lot of people just live it. I've seen those Toyotas clicking and they click for years and they still run okay. Timothy Vasilev says, what is the best used hybrid car to buy? All right, well, I would have to say Toyota. The Prius has been around for around over 25 years. They're most reliable ones, but you have to realize everything breaks down eventually. And I would not buy a hybrid car that had 150,000 miles or more because when that stuff breaks, the battery costs a fortune. The generator costs seven grand to replace because you got to replace the transmission that it's part of as a unit at Supra expensive repairs. I wouldn't think twice about buying a Toyota 4Runner with 150,000 miles if it was a non-hybrid. If you're talking about a hybrid one, no, because when they break, they cost a fortune. I would not buy a high mileage one because there's too much repair and too complex and hardly anybody knows how to work on them. Ronald Larson says, Scotty, is a 2013 Impala worth replacing timing change oil pump? It lasts 140,000 miles. I live between Buffalo and Rochester, New York. 140,000 miles. The rest of the engine's still worn, right? You change the timing change the oil pump. The pistons are still the same. The valves are, I would not. I would just drive it till it dropped, and if it did drop, I'd either put in a used or a remanufactured engine if you want to keep the vehicle. I'd never buy one in the first place, so I'd never be stuck in that position, but it's stupid. The engine's all worn out. Don't put a couple pieces on when the engine's all worn out anyway. Brian Hobbs says, Scotty, what do you think of a 2010 Kia Sedona? How long can they last before they turn into money pits? A very good question. They can last quite some time. I had a customer had one with 140,000 miles, never had any real major repairs on it. But I don't see too many of them with more mileage than that, unless they were all highway driving. Like I knew a guy was a salesman, he had 250 on one, but he put it on in two years. And highway driving is equivalent to 10% city driving. So you go 200,000 going 60 miles on an hour, it's like 20,000 miles in the town. So it doesn't count as actual mileage. So you'd have to know who drove it, how did they drive? If it was your friend and he was a salesman, he put it on fast, yeah, you could buy one with 150, but it was stop and go city driving. No, you wouldn't want to buy one. Lucas Lust says, I have a Volvo. It starts hard only when it's warm. Okay. If a car starts hard only when it's warm, generally it's because it's flooding out. So it's hard to start out. And then it finally starts and see some black smoke coming out. It's running too rich. Leaking fuel injectors are number one for that. They get hot. They drip a little fuel in. On the other hand, so let's say you mean it starts hard that it won't crank. That's just the starter wearing out. If it doesn't run, run, run. When you shut off a car, but the engine's hot, it's soaking with heat. And the starter, a lot of times, won't start till it cools off. That's the starter. But if it crank, 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 cranks, but it doesn't start, usually because it's flooding out from either the fuel injector 
or fuel pressure regulator or something is allowing fuel to get in the engine and flood it out when it's hot. Cool Buddy 28 says, should I buy a car from a dealership? Should I buy one off Facebook Marketplace and save some money? Well, anything you buy used, you're taking a gamble. And believe it or not, a lot of the Facebook Marketplace are actually guys that are selling cars for used car lots. And they just pretend it's their private car and then you find out that they're just selling it for a dealership. The dealership gives them a cut of the commission if they sell the car. You can't trust anybody these days. And as for the dealerships, you can't trust them. Hey, I had a guy in summer, he bought a car over. It was a Lexus. He bought it a Toyota though, used car lot at a Toyota dealership, right? The thing was a pile of junk. He paid nine grand. The engine was wearing out. They didn't even check it out themselves at the Toyota dealership. You're not going to get a good deal from them either. You got to pay a mechanic like me to check out a car before you buy, no matter where you buy it. And your choice of where you look is up to you. Go by price, see what's out there. You never know what you're going to run into. You might find a deal where somebody's kid gets thrown in jail and they're selling their car. Somebody joins the army, they're selling their car. Or an older person died with a low mileage car. You never know. Never know what you're going to find. But you'll never get a deal at a dealership ever. Scotty, love your videos. I have a Mitsubishi Galant 2004, 65,000 miles. Seems solid, but I'm curious about it. What do you think? I'm not a fan of Mitsubishis that wear out before the time, but nine years old and it's only got 65,000 miles. It should still be fine. Change the engine oil and filter every 5,000 miles with synthetic fluid. Change the coolant once every four years. You know, do regular maintenance. Change the transmission fluid every 40, 50,000 miles. Take care of it. You never know how it's going to last. You don't have very many miles. On it. it might last quite some time. Generally, the Mitsubishi's don't fall apart until they have well over 100 something thousand miles on it. So you still got probably quite a bit of life left in that car. I'm not a fan of them, but hey, you still might last quite some time. Coleman Young says, Scotty, I'm 45 year old, first time buyer. I'm in Chicago. I've had my share of beaters. Is there any advice you can give me to stay in a 3K range for a Toyota? Well, you're in Chicago, which is a bad place because the cars rust there. My advice is go down to Texas and buy one. Get a Toyota, get a Corolla or a Honda Civic. They're going to be higher mileage, but where you are, Generally, the cars rust out, and if they rust out, they're useless. They'll just fall apart. And even if the frame isn't rusted, the suspension, the control arms, your steering, that's all rusted, and that'll break and fall off too. So you basically want to go away from Chicago to buy your vehicle. Look around. I know a lot of guys in Texas. They sell cars to people up north. The people would just ship them up there. So I mean, it'd be my advice. The Corollas and Honda Civics are probably the best for money in that. You're still going to be high mileage one today with prices as they are. Antonio Garcia says, Jeep. Liberty 2009 to 2012. Are they good vehicles? One word. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's the cheaper Jeep. They decided years ago, okay, let's make some cheaper Jeeps. The good strong ones, so they cost too much to make. So let's make them cheaper, sell them to people. They are not really good vehicles. They just aren't. Especially when Fiat took over Chrysler, quality went, and now, hey, they're owned by Stellantis. Peugeot, Fiat, and Chrysler all together, the three stooges of car manufacturing. I would not buy one. Blake Dimphy says, do I have to tune my car for an air intake? Yeah, if you put a cold air intake, you want it to run right. It really has to be tuned by a pro. That's changing your flow. The computer doesn't really know what's happening. They can get confused. They can run worse. Maybe it'll work okay. You never know, but generally you have to. That's why I tell people don't waste your money on a cold air intake. It doesn't do much at all. Now, race car guys have them and stuff, but they have millions of things that they change and they have it tuned. Sometimes, even during the race, they'll retune it. You're not going to have that level. Level of technology, it's best to just leave that crap alone. It really does not affect how your car runs all that much. It really doesn't change much. Vince Penico says, I got a 96 Dodge 2500 Ram van, 149,000 miles. I want to go another 100K. If the transmission goes out, should I junk it? Well, if it's not rusted out, that's a pretty simple van, rear wheel drive. You could have the transmission replaced. You could get a remanufactured unit. They still have them for those things. I'm not a, a Dodge fan, but back in 96, they make them a lot better than they make them today. If it's not rusted out. Now, if you live up north, it's all rotten away. Yeah, just get rid of it because it's worthless eventually. The shock arms will rust off. Everything will rust off. And eventually the wheels will fall off from rust. But if it's not rusty, yeah, hey, what the heck? They don't make them like they used to. And if the tranny goes out, put another one in. The YouTuber says, Scotty, is a Toyota RAV4 Hybrid 2022 a smart buy? If I wish to have an SUV, we can't have gasoline only engine in my country. I went on it five to 10 years without major problems. Yeah, it probably would be. You're buying a new one and Toyota's generally last a long time. The earliest I saw a Toyota hybrid break was like 170,000 miles. Should be pretty trouble free there. They're well-made vehicles. I don't buy hybrids because I'm cheap and I only buy cars that are, you know, 10 or 15 years old. And by then the hybrids can get expensive to fix where a regular gasoline engine, no. But if you got to buy one, that's definitely the one to buy. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.